Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com. TGIF, everybody, you have made it through another week. Congratulations on uh, your on your on your victory, on your moral victory of making it to Friday. And we're going to take a look at the Friday game. We've got a uh, a trio of Friday games, Scott, and uh, there could be some good ones here. It's uh, got a little Big Ten action, a little Mountain West coming back. You ready? Uh, yeah, it sounds good to me. I know yesterday I'm, I'm a bit uh, sour. As uh, there were two games yesterday, mm -hmm. I gave out three leans in a play of the day. All three leans won the play of the day lost, which wow. is uh, not fun at all. Uh, I know that we both like Georgia Southern in the under. We both like Colorado State in the under. And I, of course, I had Colorado State minus the one and a half as my play of the day. The under cashed easily. And, Southern, and Georgia Southern's undercashed easily, and Georgia Southern won by a touchdown. So, yeah, all the leans were right. The play of the day was wrong. I feel like it happens more than it should, but it happens. So it is what it is. Well, I don't do leans. You either play it or you don't. Uh, well, we talk about all the games, so that's kind of how I go about it. For sure. Yeah, it was a – I'll tell you, that that Colorado State team was surprisingly terrible. They were really I, bad. They I were really bad. Well, they got away from running the ball, Scott. They, they, they were running the ball effectively, and they were pounding it in there just like we said they should do. I don't understand the game plan, though. It's like they have McElroy, who's this huge bruiser. Right. Like an Eddie Lacy type, and yet they're running him to the outside. Yeah, and then they run the other kid inside. I, I, I didn't get it. Uh, well, and you know, uh, you know who didn't get it? They, it was their defense on third down. Just absolutely they were awful. Dreadful, dreadful defense. On third and long, just, you know, a situation where you maybe give up one of those every three games or so. Okay. They gave up like four in a row. It was really yeah, bad. It was, it, was, it was awful. So but Yeah, that game wasn't close. I stopped watching at halftime. Now, I had a premium play on the, uh, on the uh, Falcons and uh, the Carolina Panthers under. And you talked about – It looked really bad after a half. Boy, it did. We were, at, we were at 30, and those teams showed no signs at all of slowing down. And then they came out and were nice enough to put up 12 points in the second half. So well, even though uh, even though the first half didn't look bad, I feel like you kind of automatically won the bet when the Falcons kicked the field goal in fourth and one at the three yard line to start the game. Felt good. Felt good about just that. Stupid. Really Not only did they go for a field goal, they called a timeout just to send the kicking unit on. So they thought about it even longer than they wanted to, and then still made the wrong decision. I take full credit because I uh, I didn't. Start you, you mentioned it on the show. I, well, I didn't take. I didn't take. I didn't. I didn't start watching it until it was three to nothing, and then I turned it on. No, but you mentioned now Atlanta settling for red zone field goals the entire yeah. time. That's yeah, yeah, that's what they and that's what they did. They 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 double they double up the wides. They are able to get a body on the tight end because he ain't no good. And yeah, it's tougher. It's tougher than just score inside the twenty, and that's showed showed itself again last night. I like. I, yeah, I know my main lean there was Atlanta <laughs> first half that cashed because consistently they're very good in the first half, so that worked out well. But, yeah, the game – that game was somewhat entertaining. Bridgewater got injured. Really shows the drop-off in talent between the NFL and the XFL because P.J. Walker was the best quarterback in the entire league by far in the XFL. Right. And he looked completely lost in the NFL for about, I don't know, five, ten minutes. He was I, awful when I he came into the game. I that happened. I turned it off. I, I turned it off, and they, I, I watched – I had it on. They scored 27 points from the time I started watching. I turned it off, watched the other college games. They scored 12. So. Yep. I take full credit for the victory. Yep. Whoever had under that one. Um, well, that game went the way I thought it would. All right, so we're going to start off here, Scott, with the uh, Minnesota uh, Golden Gophers there, eh? Uh, playing the Maryland Terrapins. Uh, the Turtles are 20-point underdogs at home, and your total there is 61. I know you and I both have uh, uh, premium plays on this one. I uh, actually haven't made my video yet, but I'm going to have a, vid a play on this game. Okay, so I'm going to talk – I'm going to talk a little bit about the total here, and I don't think the uh, I don't I don't think the Gophers can do it by themselves, Scott. I don't I don't think the Terrapins have much of an offense. I think the 61 number is too high. I do like the under in this spot right here. Uh, I'm going to agree. I'm going to lean to the under. Uh, Maryland put up three points against Northwestern. Northwestern does I think have an underrated defense. They are a very physical team who have shown signs of being able to bully opposition in the past, but I'll tell you one thing I have learned from watching college football. Talent does not run in the family. And uh, Tua's brother is not very good. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a little early to give up on him. He's, he's had just one start there. but It's uh, very early, and I'm aware that Maryland doesn't exactly have the weapons to help him out. 
but uh, let's just say that there's a pretty healthy drop off. I'm guessing uh, he was not number one on the depth chart when he transferred out of Alabama. Uh, I, I would assume that much as well. What do you think he was? Fourth? Something it's like Maryland. That? It's Maryland. So I'll, I'll give him benefit that I'll, I'll go with third. Okay. It's, Mar- it's Maryland we're talking about. It's not like they had great options to begin with. Yeah. I, uh... probably, I think they will make a quarterback change at some point in the middle of this game because Tua, I mean, Tua's brother was just awful. Uh, Tua Leah? Yeah. Yeah, I am uh I think they give him I think they give him almost the full game here. They, I, 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 I really don't know. They said they're committed to him. They said they're absolutely committed to him. I didn't know that there was tanking in college football. But I'm gonna lean to the under. If Maryland scored three I know Minnesota's defense was awful in the first game. It is possible that Michigan is just very good. So I'm not going to overreact to a bad defensive showing against a Michigan team that's ranked for a reason. And even though they have been known as being an overrated team with Harbaugh, they're still ranked every year. It's not like they're an awful team. Like, you know, they're still a top 25 team year in, year out. And now you're facing Maryland, who's easily the bottom of the conference. They're worse than Rutgers. Oh, obviously. Correct. So for that reason, it's an ultimate revenge. I guess it's a revenge spot, but it's a – we're going to take our anger out from what happened last week game, and yeah. they're, going to, they're going to run it up. It is kind of a revenge spot. It's not a classic revenge, but it's a revenge for last week. Yeah, it's a spot of looking saying, we were awful. We're supposed to win this, uh, win our division in the conference. We're going to take all our frustrations out on this. Awful. It's a tune-up game in conference play. That's basically what it is. Um, let me ask you a question. and I, we, have, we haven't talked about this. If, uh, since this is a free year for everybody in college, if – the Jets have the number one pick. Does Trevor Lawrence just say, I'm going to play another year of college football? No. I, I, there's, I don't think there's any way it goes, he goes back to college. You don't think he, you think he goes to the Jets? Yeah, 100%. Why, why would you get involved in that? Uh, simply put, you're automatically put in a New York media market, which is already going to do you well. Plus, you're going to get paid, what, tens of millions of dollars every year in comparison to going back to college for free? You're going to get, pay, you're going to get paid that anyway. Correct, but you have to wait a year. Right, but you may be in a situation where you could actually win some games. It's possible, but you also have to remember that he also just got engaged, and I don't think he really wants to get married on a college salary, in my opinion. I think there are a lot of variables at play, but I do think that he will just swallow it and he will go to the Jets, unless he demands an Eli Manning situation where he demands to get traded. But I think that there is no way – John Elway did the same thing. No, that's possible. I'm just saying, I think that's a possibility. I think him going back to college is not a possibility at all. Mm, okay. He's guaranteed to go number one. You're going to unload the Briggs truck. Like, no, he doesn't need to go back to college. I think there's a possibility he refused to play for the Jets. But I think there's no way he goes back to college. Okay. In my opinion. All right. We'll see. I just, I just, that's just such a horrid organization. They have nothing. Oh, it's going- terrible. But I think that anytime you can go number one, guaranteed, and, you know, you know you're going to get paid tens of millions. Gonna, you know what he would go the year after that? Number one. Yeah. But so, you, also risk, you also have an injury risk for another year. Well, you know, they got insurance policies on that. Uh, I, I that think, yeah, I know that's a worst-case scenario, but you have seen situations where some players have gone back to college, they got injured, their stock dropped. And it's just a matter of why you're not like, – the first, the first person I think of when it comes to injury – I'm not going to go too long on this, but I remember Jake Locker uh, yeah. from Washington, who yeah. was – he's not a good quarterback, but he was projected to go number one. He decided, you know what, I'm going to go back to college, and he dropped to, like, the tens. And it's like you lost out on tens of millions of dollars because you wanted to go back to college. Well, you know, and Herbert was kind of the same way. Um, well, Herbert still he, went top six. So that really I wasn't. Know, I, I think he would have gone higher. I think he, I think he would have gone higher the year before. But that's the point. I think Lawrence has nothing to gain by going back to Clemson. Okay. I mean, I, I think Lawrence makes plenty of money at Clemson. I'm but, sure. I think he does, too. Call, call me a cynic, but. Well, that reminds me of, uh, of baseball, where it's like, yeah, how to check it all money. No, he made all his money in college. <laughs> like yeah, it's i don't know if you've seen that movie but it's Under, uh, oh underrated. underrated it's an underrated movie it's an underrated yeah. movie all right but yeah so anyway that's my brief thoughts on lawrence i i, I think it, when push comes <laughs> to shove he's gonna declare the question is if he demands a trade from the jets i think that's the main way out but i think he's 100 percent gonna be going to the draft all right east carolina tulsa scott I know you have a thought on the side, uh, so I'm um, 16 and a half East Carolina. Um, I do have well, a thought on the side. 
The line right. keeps dropping uh, because East Carolina is getting some pieces back. I know that they were missing the starting quarterback, Ehlers, because he was in the COVID protocol. Uh, I think that's actually a big deal because the backup quarterback was awful. Couldn't throw the ball. Garcia, I believe. He couldn't throw the ball to save his life. Uh, Ehlers, he's turnover prone, but he's, he's got some talent. But at the end of the day, Tulsa's Tulsa. Like, this, this team is actually very good. I know that they struggled early on against South Florida last week. Didn't matter. I don't think Zach Smith is a great quarterback. I think he's better than Ehlers. I think he's serviceable. The ground game is very good for Tulsa. And that defense is filthy. I think Philip Montgomery, very underrated head coach. So yeah, the, defense for, Tulsa. the defense for Tulsa is the surprising part because that's usually – they're usually kind of the opposite of what they are this year. They usually have a much stronger offense. I forgot what the guy's name is. Spencer? They got that really, really good, uh, like, hybrid linebacker whose name escapes me. I, I, I don't know why I thought it was Spencer. That name just jumped into my head. But either way. That sounds uh, very close. I'm not sure. I think he right. had the pick six last week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But he he's, uh, they have a very, very good defense. And I think you'll agree with me when I say that uh, Montgomery is a very underrated head coach. So Yeah, I think, I think he's, he's bound for – I think he's bound for better. Sorry, his name was Collins. It was uh, Zavin Collins. Um. I, I'm. I'm. Gonna, this is another one where I'm going to lean towards the under. I, I think this uh, Tulsa defense does a job in East Carolina. I don't really care who's starting at quarterback. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to lean over. I'm going to disagree here. Uh, okay. It's right. mostly just the fate of East Carolina's defense. Like, would it shock you if Tulsa scores 42 in this spot? No. Uh, and I, I, think, just, I think East I Carolina. Think it, can, I don't think it goes under. I think it could. I just think Aylor's is actually able to sustain a couple of drives. So. I don't think he's great, but I do think for a, for a bottom-dwelling team, I think that they actually have a decent quarterback. Okay. All right, good enough. Uh, and last on our slate there, Scott, a little, uh, little Mountain West uh, nightcap for you as the Hawaii uh, Rainbow Warriors head off to Laramie to take on the Wyoming Cowboys. Uh, this line is actually switched, Scott. Uh, now, Wyoming was a two and a half point underdog. Now they're one point favorites. I know you had to play that a video on it, so I do, and I don't mind. I don't mind talking about it. Um, I'm leading but... Wyoming. Uh, that's just how I'm going to look at this spot. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, this is a. Uh, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, and, and I did some. I did some research on this, and this is a uh, a Hawaii team that really doesn't travel well, especially in back to back travel spots. Um, they are one and thirteen straight up. And two and twelve against the number of their last fourteen games, where they have uh, it's the, at least their second at least their second game in a row on the road. Plus, Wyoming has been a very decent team in the Mountain West for the last couple of years. I know that they lost to Nevada in the opener. They were down double digits late in that game, and they ended up rallying to force overtime. So even though they lost, I don't as, I hate using the cliche that there's something to build on. I really think Wyoming is something to build on because they really almost pulled a rabbit out of their hat last week. Yeah, and this is a. You agree with that? Do you think that actually matters for morale? I think it has to, right? I, do. They, they, they I, I, I think it. Yeah, I think it's much better th than just getting run out of the building. I, I think. agree. I think that if you show signs of life late, then it shows you, you know, there is something here. Well, and I, I kind of liken to the Golden Gophers of Minnesota, just uh, holding Michigan to uh, 14, 14 7 in the second half. Yeah. You know, where they, sh they showed a little something. Uh, this is going to be a raw night up there in Laramie, Scott. It's going to be 34 degrees. You're telling, uh, me, you're telling me that Hawaii's players are not going to be used to the 34 degree weather. 15 mile an hour winds, and uh, oh, by the way, it's the highest stadium in college football. It sits at 7,165 feet. It's ironic. I would have guessed it was in Colorado. Right. That was, a, that was a weed. That was a weed joke. I know. A little weed joke for everybody. A little weed joke for the people. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they've got 20 players native from to Hawaii, one from American Samoa, Samoa, 14 from California, and 11 others that are scattered from Texas to Florida, Arizona. It sounds well. Uh, it sounds like warm climate. It sounds it sounds like uh, warm climate and no mountains. Yep. Um, good luck, boys. That's uh, I think I think the uh, the ugliest uniforms in football, by the way. That 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 uh, the brown, brown and the light brown, the brown baby, yellow light brown, baby shit yellow pants that they wear. Uh, I think it's just dreadful, but it's, it's not good. Uh, but I think it's good enough to get the win. Of course, I'm still salty. They beat Mizzou a couple of years back, so uh, yeah, I think I think they get the win here. I've got them on the. Uh, that was the bowl game, right? That was the Josh Allen bowl game. No, it was the opener. It was. Oh, the, was the opener. Okay, open, open the season there. Oh, the Kelly Bryant game, classic. And I've got them. I've Scott. I've got them on the money line, and it's it's 
lightened up a little bit here, but when I took it last night, uh, money line was minus 118, and laying a point was uh, um, was minus. Hang on, let me look. Here. It was minus 105, minus 110. Yeah, what was it? It was uh, no, it was even worse. It was minus 116. You're, you're oh. literally two cents of value. So uh, yeah, I just I just went ahead and eliminated the point there for an extra two cents. Yeah, there's no point in taking the point there, especially when one's going to be a push. I think Wyoming should win by at least a touchdown. This game could get ugly, but uh, Hawaii came out very nice win. Give them props for that in their opener because Fresno State apparently is either not as bad as I thought they were, or Colorado State is just atrocious. But either way, Hawaii won that game. But Wyoming's defense is very underrated in Mountain West standards. I think they'll dominate the line of scrimmage. Tough spot uh, flying back to Hawaii in between games on a short week. That's a uh, that's just not good. I think if Hawaii falls behind early, I I think they kind of just throw it in. Over, over. All right, give me uh, – yeah, give me, uh, we'll both take the uh, Hawaii uh, Rainbow Warriors there. In- oh, you mean we're going to take uh, Wyoming? I mean Wyoming, sorry, but, yeah, Hawaii to suck. That's it. Any thoughts on the total? You got anything on the total on that one? I really don't because I hate taking overs with Wyoming of all teams. I know this line has climbed from like 55 and a half to like 61, mostly probably because of Hawaii. I'm going to lean to the under. Because Hawaii ran the ball a lot against yeah. Fresno State, and yeah. I don't think people I don't I don't know if the pub I don't think the public drove it up six points, but it's possible people just see Hawaii and immediately think, oh, I'm gonna bet the over. But this team doesn't run and shoot like they have for the last, I don't know, twenty years. No, they got a they got a new coach, new system. No, they're more into balance and actually eating up more clock. So Wyoming isn't gonna put up points in bunches anytime soon, and the defense is pretty good. I think this game will probably be ugly. I think Wyoming's probably going to blow it open 34-13. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's legit. Like, I, I know it's minus one, and that's a bold call, so they're going to win by 20. Plus, I don't think it is. Like, I think it's a really bad spot for Hawaii. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. Somebody made, somebody made fun of me yesterday, by the way, for uh, what, mentioning Timmy, Timmy Chang, and you said, what a long time ago that was. And they said, I look devastated. <laughs> Which just means I'm old. I mean, you were throwing that out there. I'm like, all right, I'm thinking like, you know, Brennan and some of these other guys. But Chang's a classic. He still holds a ton of uh, college football records. At least I think he still does. I don't know if they were over if they were overtaken, but I think he's the all time leading in uh, FBS passing yards. Uh, I know he was. I know he was for a while. I think he uh, still is. I don't think anyone's passed him. Uh, he. Was, I think Brennan's touchdown thing got passed by I think Graham Harrell of all people from like. Texas Tech a handful of years ago. But I'm pretty sure Chang still has the most passing yards. I think. <laughs> but anyway, the point is that Hawaii is uh, – Chase Keenum overtook him, by the way. Oh, Keenum. Okay, Keenum. I, I had the wrong Texas Tech quarterback. Another another terrible – no, Case Keenum was Houston. Another another Houston, terrible – I'm all over the place right now. Yeah, my bad. Another terrible Houston quarterback that couldn't play in the NFL. Yeah, Keenum made an NFC title game. Okay, whatever. Just saying. Well, is he still? He still is. He, he's backing up somebody right now, and they were he's actually backing up Baker. What's that? He's yeah, they were Baker. actually calling for him. Where there was like some rumblings about. Hey, he came in uh, against Pittsburgh, and he didn't play well, but he came in. Yeah, right. yeah. I was all over the place. That's right. Keenum was in Houston. Carroll was in Texas Tech. Yeah, a lot of passing yards, meaningless passing yards. But yeah, uh, I think Hawaii's going to run out here. All right, so Timmy Timmy Chang was 2004. Wow, okay, that was a while ago. All right, that is devastating because it seems like about five years ago. So, mm-hmm. all right, bud. So there's our three for tonight. Should be a fun night of college football. Got some interesting action on. I'm I'm all I'm all about the college ball. I can I can hardly wait to have it on every night. It's going to be fun. Uh, Mac Maction, nothing we can, better. We get Maction back. So for now, we go with what we got. Those are our three plays for today. Uh, if you want to find out even more information on this, you know the spot to go. It's winnersandwiners.com. Deep dives into not just these games, but every game going on in America every single day. It is never a handier uh, time to use it than college football as you dive into some of these teams that you don't have a chance to follow. That's okay because those guys do. So make sure you stop by and check out winnersandwiners.com. Deep dives into every game every day. Uh, make sure you stop by and check out me and Scott here doing our thing every single day. But for now, that's going to be it for our Friday show. Appreciate you watching. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money back at the window. And we'll see you tomorrow on Today in Sports Betting. Take care, everybody.